the European LCS semi-finals with the number one team in the spring split. SK Gaming are one game behind the Unicorns of Love in this best of five. Just want to kick things off and let you guys know that additional floor seats have been opened up for the mid-season Invitational, which is in Tallahassee, Florida, as of earlier today. That's a tournament that runs from May 7th to May 10th. Will also feature the number one team from every major region worldwide. Could be Fnatic or one of the teams playing today. And Deficio, AHQ qualified this morning after beating the Yoey Flash Wolves yeah. from the LMS. That's number four taking down number one. Bit of a surprise. Nobody expected that. No, obviously been a few problems for the Yoey Flash Wolves after IEM, but still quite a surprise. And we're going to have to see what AHQ can do. Good old West Door. Yeah, we'll see what they can bring to the table. Guys, for more information on that, head over to lolesports.com forward slash tickets. And we hope to see all of you there. We're about to jump into game number two in this best of five. Once again, because this was Unicorn's side choice, they opted into back. red side. Deficio, tell me what you think. I think that the way SA Gaming is built right now is that N-Rated prefers disengaged support, so he's not going to be the guy starting the fights. Okay. Svenskan prefers Nidalee and Rek'Sai, early aggressive junglers where you can invade on the enemy jungler as well, so he's not going to engage. Freddy is the man who's going to have to start the fights. Maokai is a fantastic pick for him, but in order for Maokai to engage, Morgana has to be taken away. I love Hillisang on Thresh. I think he's fantastic on the champion, but the Black Shield is a very important thing here for SK Gaming to get rid of. They can also first pick the Morgana if they want to and give it over to Enraided. Well, let me stop also you. be an option. Let me stop you there because TLDR was banned Morgana and it's not been done. Or first pick. Or first pick Morgana. Morgana has not been played by Enraided this year yet. Used to the play option it is though. There. Used to play it. If uh, it is opted to lock in, what does this allow the Unicorns There we go, love? boys. There we go. I like what SK Gaming is doing now taking away that Morgana. So you can run the same setup if you want to. Another change to be made, we need an assassin in the mid lane for SK Gaming, because when you do that, you stop Power Beaver from picking their slow scaling champions in the mid lane. Zed is a champion where Power of Evil doesn't have any direct counters to it, unless he's been practicing the likes of Urgot. He has played Chogath though in the mid lane, which does well in the laning phase against Zed. Also, late in the stages, you can build that hourglass, get very tanky, you won't get one shot by him. So that could be an option for the Unicorns if Zed gets locked in. Otherwise, go LeBlanc. We haven't seen Power View play Zed, so that's not there as one of the counters or one of the good matchups at least. I think that's a good champion now for SK. Well, loading to that previous game, Enrated was 5-0 on Nami, he's now 5-1. If Zed gets locked in for Fox, Fox is 5-0 on that champion. And we'll see what they decide to prioritize. Kikis will take the fat man in the jungle, or the grungle if you prefer. Hellesung is going to default to his second tier support. He's only played four champions the entire year at the professional level. There's of course Annie Morgana, Thresh and Leona. He's going to be locking in that Thresh for this match. Yeah, no real surprise for him. Annie is left open and funny enough, he doesn't just lock it in. No, Thresh for him. They can set up somewhat the same where Instead of a binding, you have the hook, which also connects into a lot of chain CC from them, so they can still run that Jinx as well. But SK Gaming, as long as they change up the mid lane picks for, for themselves, they should be fine against the slow scaling comp that Unicorns ran in the last game. Something to highlight as well, Unicorns favoring the Gragas over the Maokai on the first rotation. When Morgana was taken away from them, Last week, it was Thresh, Maokai, they're one and two. If SK, now. if SK lock in this Caitlyn and Lee, it may give Unicorns the option to go that route. So Sven Skeren going to a mega comfort pick. But here's the thing. Given playing the Kate you were talking about previously. If Unicorns pick the Maokai, they get the same problem that SK had in the last game, where Maokai has a tough time engaging against Morgana. So that's why they're most likely not going to pick it. Cyan can always start a fight instead, and he does fine in the lane against the Maokai. It's just an even farm lane anyway. So in this situation here, we might just get Maokai last pick for SK and then an Assassin in the mid lane, and we're good to go. Only problem then is that you're going to have a lot of physical damage for them. I'm lying to you because I'm thinking Zed as the only mid lane champ for yeah. some reason. LeBlanc Ari could come in as well. And then you have the Maokai top lane, and that's a good setup for SK. If Unicorns lock in the Jinx, it is to lane swap, and it is... oh. Smart thing. <laughs> By picking LeBlanc, you want to do Zed into LeBlanc. But you can't do Zed if you have Maokai top lane, because then you have too much physical damage. So by him taking this pick here, you've removed that from SK Gaming. It's going to be the best one, because also if they get, if you see an Ari into LeBlanc, 
you lose the matchup pre-level 6. So this pick here from Unicorns are so, so smart. And then you pick the Jinx, you can just lane swap and you can fast push down because that's what SK always likes to do in the in the swaps as well. You match the fast push and then you meet up when you hit level 6. Anyway, you got a BF sword and that's where you can start doing something against a Caitlyn. If this gets locked in, could also be Morgana top lane then <laughs> for Freddy. There's a lot of things here, but I love, the way, I, I love the way the teams are trying to bait each other into a bad comp, but also how they have answers for it. So now you get Morgana top lane as the magic damage, and you can get that Zed in the mid lane. For the first time, we will see a Morgana. No, uh, in the playoffs for Freddy, he's played it twice before. When I look at my stats, currently 2 and 0. 67% kill participation. So Freddy is going back to something he's played in the spring split. I don't remember it particularly well, so yeah, it is, we'll have uh, to see how he can perform on that one. But he's got that mixed damage, magic and physical. He does. And Deficio, Shivana, it was banned against Huni yesterday all day long, and Chachi's going to run it today. Yeah, the TP smite top lane, you go for Skirmisher Saber and the Cinder Hulk, and you scale really well into the late game. You have fantastic jungle clear as well in a potential lane swap. You can 2v2 jungle or you can even jungle on your own because you have that smite. And then later on in the one-on-ones, Morgana will never be able to kill you. But this lane matchup, if it does go standard lanes, which is what SK Gaming want in this situation because you got a fantastic bottom lane setup, Caitlyn Annie, which is a bit of a kill lane even. If you manage to land a stun from Annie, try and pull down a trap from the Caitlyn and you got long range poke. Morgana in the lane for Freddy is just boring <laughs> but it works because you just push the wave over and over and over and you chip away on that tower slowly which secures SK Gaming the outer turrets and then they can start doing their one three one they always do when have an assassin in the mid lane I love the adaptation for them I like the fact they move Morgana top as well to yep. get that Z LeBlanc matchup you could see what Unicorns were trying to do be like haha we picked LeBlanc now you can't do it because you want Maokai jokes on you and SK turns it around well, we'll have to see how SK can handle themselves. I'm going to keep my eyes on Sven Skeren in this particular matchup. Lee Sin into Gragas. Your team comps are about to pop up. Lee Sin should have the advantage early, but I just feel Gragas is going to offer so much more as the game progresses. Guys at home, hashtag SK win, hashtag UOL win. Unicorns won the Twitter vote the first time we checked in. In the previous game, they won the first game fairly convincingly as well. Let's see if your votes are still leaning in favor. We're loading up onto the Rift for game two of this best of five. And it was Unicorns of Love that opted into the red sides. You did touch on a very key point here with the Gragas outscaling and Lee Sin. The rest of SK Gaming also gonna get outscaled by the Unicorns of Love. So they have to be able to get an early lead and start doing their 1-3-1 split push. Well, let's take, a look. Trouble. let's take a look how they handle themselves. And I also wanna hear from Power of Evil what he thinks about Fox. I would even say he's equal to me. I think we are both pretty good and his champion pool is um, I would say huger than Betsy so I need to like prepare a bit more of my picks obviously to like against his strengths or at least from my view it looks like if he falls behind he's falling behind pretty hard and if he gets rolling he's a beast. Well, I think we can say the same for the rest of SK Gaming as well as a team. If they do tend to fall behind, or if they do fall behind, they tend to really struggle getting back in the game. This here is going to be the same situation. You have a double tank setup from Unicorns of Love. You've got the hyper carry in the late game for them as well on Vardax here. That is very, very strong. Cinderhawk Shavana becomes nearly unkillable in the late game with the 25% bonus HP, the 20% damage reduction from the Skirmisher's Saber on the enemy AD carry. So SK Gaming here, not running a tank or anything, they have to snowball early with the Lee Sin, have to get down these outer turrets, and then just simply push Unicorns into a corner where they will never get enough time and enough farm to reach a late game point. Well, we'll see if SK can make that early lane decision happen. It seems like Unicorns have been able to read the lane swap. They will be meeting Forgiven. Yeah, but this is in favor of SK. This is SK top. countering Unicorns of Love and predicting they're swapping to the top side. They want to meet them. You can also see because they're starting Grump, they know or they expect it to be a 2v2 matchup. But this is very good for SK Gaming, exactly what they wanted. You get to bully the Jinx in the early stages of the game. You get also the Morgana who can start pushing. Shavana, when she's running Smite, needs a bit more time before she can do anything in the lane. You need to get the Skirmisher Saber completed. You need to even get a second item to stack with the Cinderhawk before you become very, very strong. So it is a free lane for both Forgiven and Freddy. I will see how 
who can make use of that advantage more? And Rated and Forgiven playing very aggressive already. And Rated positioning very far forward. Remember, and Rated actually last picking that Annie this time around. And we'll have to see Vardags and Hillisang paying a lot of respect to the level two. And obviously, the long range auto attacks from both of their respective opponents. We'll have to keep track on how far down Vardags will fall. We'll also see how the rest of the lanes are playing out. Power of Evil's got a small advantage in that middle lane. And it's going to be an expected farm fest from the respective top laners who are currently in the bottom lane. Yeah, it's going to be a farm fest where uh, Freddy gets a few levels, gets a few ranks in his W, and he's going to start pushing away in that tower from the Unicorns of Love. Mid lane, it's a matchup that we see fairly often, and it, it tends to go the same way where early on, before the first back, it's very even. But then you force the LeBanc to build arm guard early, delay her normal spikes of going, let's say, Morel, Normicon, Death Cap, and have their one shot potential on a lot of champions. You force her into an hourglass, and that delays her quite a lot. Makes her value not weak, but weaker at least. And that's where Zed has that advantage because he makes you, or he forces your build. And also he has the kill pressure. Oh, the Death Cap connects! That was insane. It's gonna land on a Flame Chompers! Hillisung has done it again in a lane matchup. He should not win. You have one job, SK, though. Enrated gets caught. You have one job. Don't get caught and die on a tower. I mean, there was one minion left. You need to be, expect that hook to fly out when there's only one minion that's about to die. Enrated getting caught. Not what SK Gaming were looking for. Swin was even up here, setting up for an early dive if they get more damage than Jinx. So like, what SK will always do, and why they just push the lane over and over, is whenever you're trying to farm on the tower, you gotta time your auto attacks with the minions about to die, and with the tower shots. So you cannot trade back with Forgiven, he gets free hits on you in the face, over and over. And even if the jungler comes to gank him, your dual lane is normally so low, they don't really add anything, and he can survive, escape from that jungler. Unless you get hooked and pulled under a tower. Such a big mistake. Unicorns of Love starting game two in a similar fashion to the previous game. However, not needing Kikis' jungle intervention. And we do see Kikis roaming his way towards this middle lane. Not really going to have any opportunities, but the lane is pushing, so could be there for a potential counter gank if Svenskiron wanted to sniff around. Doesn't seem to be the case for the time being. And we did see that Vardex opted to stay in lane. So Hillisang has already backed. Grabbed himself a, another ward there. So he's got that Targon's brace. And we do see Vardex currently around 1,500 yeah. gold. But look at this here. You can see how Vardex has to save his auto attacks for the minions to get as many last hits as possible. So Forgiven and Enrage just walks in and just starts shooting him in the face. There's nothing he can do in return. And that is so Ooh. tough. He needs Hillisang to keep connecting the hooks here to save the bottom lane. Despite Enrage dying, they're not in that big of an edge. And Forgiven here, if you want to know like the standard timing in terms of BF Sword, 55 if you get every single one and you're a fast one, then you can always go back to base, get a BF Sword. Now it's been a little bit slow. Forgiven has missed a few minions. He's sitting on 1,350 gold now. He wants a BF Sword before he goes back. Around 200 separates and 280 carries, obviously thanks to that kill. We'll need to see if Vardex can Grab an extra item yeah. if he sticks in lane longer. What SK Gaming can do is once Forgiven has enough gold for the BF Sword, you push down the wave and then you call up Svenskern. Just have him show himself on the top side. That's going to force Vardex and Hillsang away from the tower potentially, or at least get them low enough so they have to recall before he gets a BF Sword on the Jinx. And that sets him even further behind. It's something SK Gaming has done in the past as well. Use. Wait, well. Svenska no one, no one can see that, Shadow. Nobody saw that. No. no, small misplay. But nothing really came from that one anyway. So we got the arm guards as well. Probably back away. Standard itemization for the LeBlanc into Zed matchup. Hillesung still just trying some exploratory death sentences. Not able to connect the last few, but you know what? Main matchup that really was not in favor of the Unicorns. Find themselves seven CS down. And still in the gold lead. Fox with some good poke. In this middle lane. I'm interested to see how well either Power of Evil or Fox can impact the side lanes. Fox traditionally down in CS at 10 minutes because he prefers to roam when on an assassin. And he's got the makings this time around. A little bit of uh, mistimed on that sentence, hoping Vardex is going to kill a minion quicker. Vardex has managed with the kill. 
Obviously, we were talking before about how Svenskan could come up and try and force them back before they got a BF sword. That obviously doesn't matter because he got that first blood. So he has enough gold for it already. Obviously, having more gold in the back than Forgiven as well, despite being behind in farm. Mid lane going somewhat as expected. So the triple longsword start into some lifesteal for the Zed. You want to get that Cutlass so you have a bit more all-in potential. And then you just want to keep pushing the wave because you obviously don't use any mana when you push the wave in. LeBlanc will have to use mana to push it back with the distortion. And that's why you can push it into the tower and you can roam before her to one of the side lanes. So if they keep pushing in this top lane, it's just a matter of time before we can see a roam from SK, either with jungle mid laner together or just one of them going up here and try a dive on a Doran's Blade only Jinx. You can see they're trying to move forward. Will be spotted though. Power of Evil and Kick is reading it for now. Can they keep protecting the top side? That's the question. Well, we do see Death Sentence connects, but Vardax is very low. Flame Trumpers goes up mostly to zone. And here's the roam. And here comes the roam. Fox and Spin are up. This is 4v2. Teleport coming in from Visit Chachi and SK Gaming have opted to back away. Does Chachi want the fight? It looks like it because look at Kick is some Power of Evil. They're coming from the river. That's a Dragon's Rage to boot them back. The fat man comes in and throws the barrel down. All of a sudden, Fox is popped. He's trying to get Hillisung for a play and it's not going to be enough. Power of Evil is trying to get in range for any ethereal chains. Can he connect? The answer is no. Unicorns of love thwart the roam, grab themselves. Oh, no, 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 really? It connected, and rated or overrated. 0-2-0 zero, zero at nine minutes in the second game. And we really have to highlight the positioning here from N-Rated twice now. First, when he got pulled on the tower when he didn't respect the last minion dying, and now standing near the, the river, Despite knowing Unicorns of Love was oh. there, Chachi is not done yet. He's got some tower went down. Had and ready not died there, this would have been a good trade for SK. A tower for one kill. Chachi's in trouble. Could get run down. Red buff is ticking. Visit no Chachi's flash, got a lot of damage in reply. If that twin bite comes back up, Sven. Oh, execute will be enough. Gets themselves at least a kill back. But let's be honest, 10 minutes in on Lee Sin, a jungler that needed to have an impact early. Yes, you've got a kill, but the lanes are just not working out in favor of SK. Well, and Unicorns will be quite happy with where they are thus far, despite giving up that tower, I feel. Sven has honestly done his job. Because if you look at the lanes, mid lane has been pushed, bottom lane has been pushed all the time. He can't gank there. The only thing he can do is go top lane, which he did. Unicorns are a lot more ready for it. That's why they teleported in and tried to counter the dive here from SK. They got two kills for it, but because they lost bottom lane tower, because they gave up a kill in the end as well, that's not too bad for SK Gaming. This is a good Dragon Call though. Forgiven had stayed and pushed out the wave one last time up there. Look at these items now, pickaxe, BF sword, everything on the first back. Did give a Dragon over to Unicorns, but that's not the important thing for SK. The important thing is that you're going to still be stronger in the standard lanes and you can keep pushing Oh, not again, down. not again, yeah. not again! Okay, this, this one's unfortunate. Who's going to get the kill? Power of Evil. That's just, that's just painful. And this also means... Oh, he gets another one? Is in their control. No, Spence Garen's in trouble. Dragon's Rage, just defense. Power of Evil does not connect with the chains despite flashing in. This could be bad for Unicorns. SK, they're surrounding. They've got Kickers. We do see Deathmark. That's going to get Power of Evil as well. Two kills as Unicorns may be more confident than they should have been. We did see Vardags at least reply with the tower, keeping the gold even. And now Forgiven gets caught. Oh no, is he in trouble too? The Super Mega Death Rocket's available with a BF Sword and a Pickaxe. Nice and his block. body blocked! Svensk Garen saves Forgiven's life. He gets himself a kill on the board and is forced to retreat. Vardax does not connect with the Zap and is trying to find more. Here comes in Rated no from remember. the river and Fox is chasing him down as well. Flash is available if he needs it, but SK could chase. We do see the Zap does connect, but Deathmark not available for Fox. Going to be relying on those shadows, and I think smart, safe play from SK. Unicorns, they are losing some focus, and they are being punished yeah. for their over-aggressive plays. They had some good plays here, good plans, all being set up by Hillisang, landing the hooks left and right. But them giving over those kills means again that SK Gaming is honestly in a fine position. They got tower though, Unicorns in the bottom side, because the jungle had been controlled by them. Forgiving couldn't go there and defend it. We have to see what happens from now. We have to remember still, as you said, Unicorns, late game, fantastic, double tank, Jinx. You have everything you need to win late game fights. 
now comes the time that Wesker can still go back to the 1-3-1 and be super, super strong and keep putting pressure on lanes. When you've got a 4-0 Lee Sin, Sven Skeren has been gifted kills by Unicorns of Love. Got himself that Sight Stone as well as the Warrior Enchant on his Trailblazer. Gonna have all the tools he needs to make plays across the map. This time around, Hillisang didn't connect and I don't think he really wanted to either. But Unicorns remaining even. Ready to tower, got that early dragon. Now we need to see how do they regain control after a very chaotic passage yeah. of play. Put your Z bottom lane now, put your Caitlyn mid lane to just keep shoving it in. And then you push all three lanes at once. The problem for SK is they have zero pinks. They have one on the map only, none in the inventory here. So they can't really deny any vision from the Unicorns. They can maybe pick up Hill. Yeah, Thank going down, just trying to ward another positional error. But it's this time in Rated that lands a killing blow. That's going to give him some confidence back after punishing a poor decision from Hillisang. And it's going to allow the blue buff steal. So SK with some very confident plays. Pushing around the map, not letting themselves get bullied, despite the uh, early mistakes that they were responsible for as well. That's very true. They've been keeping it very cool. And this is more the style of comp and play style we're used to seeing from SK, so they know what to do. Stand a triple Dorans from Freddy. It's all about lane pressure, all about the early game for him. And SK has now been splitting up into 1-3-1 three, one setup, ready to start pushing down the last few tier one towers, mid lane and top lane out of once. Shivana obviously can do a very good job holding the Morgana away, as long as she doesn't take too much damage. But if SK can control the mid lane, they suddenly can roam to the side lanes and go and force Vizicharchi back and then go for a tower after. Vardex doesn't have the wave player to stop for him getting a few hits. As long as SK have proper wards on the flanks, on the sides here, they need them, otherwise Forgiven might be caught out. But look at this, already pushing it in. Oh, that tip is whiff. No, it didn't. Flashes, in fact, from Hillisang to get away. Death Sentence connects onto Fox. Hillisang goes back in. He has a teleport from Vizichachi. They've lost their support, but Unicorns are in trouble. Kickers is getting knocked away. We do see Sven Skeren is being run down as Freddy with a slightly delayed teleport. He's going to join this fight. Death Sentence, or rather, the Sonic Wave connects, and Sven is going to run down. Hillisang gets caught out. Enrated Flash Tibbers burned the flash of Hillisang. Could have been a very different fight, but they got their man and they may get their tower as well. And again, this all simply comes from the fact that SK Gaming had pushed in the mid lane, they pushed in the bottom lane, so they were ready to take a fight. They could see Unicorns move around, ends up getting that kill, burned two TPs, one for each top laner. And you now go back to your lanes, and we're gonna have to see if Freddy wants to contest a dragon if he wants to return to the top side. Now there's obviously no globals for him. It is going to spawn in about 45 seconds. Unicorn's got the first one. And normally that's an SK thing, but they don't necessarily need to go for them if they can keep putting pressure on the lanes because they want to get that item advantage at this point. And then the third one is going to be, be the one that belongs to SK. A lot of time before we get there, as it stands. That's a good point, honestly. And SK does have the early game. Oh well, does have the need to snowball the game. So they seem to be moving for the Dragon instead. Missing quite a lot of key items. No Infinity Edge for the AD carry, no Blade for Zed, no Hourglass obviously because of their business Scepter first from Morgana here. So it's not like Unicorns have to give this one up. They can contest it if they want to. Looks like they are happy just getting some farm and trying to trade for top tower instead. They got the late game. They don't have to take any chances. Well, Unicorns, and they want some gold instead. They, of course, secured the very first dragon of the game, so one and one will delay it. That is Kick is jumping in for Freddy. Death Sentence doesn't connect as Freddy flashes away to the side. A lot of summon spells and ultimates blown. Unicorns trying to get a kill, but they give up the dragon. They don't secure the kill, and they do secure a tower. So Deficio, fair trades. It did not look like Unicorns really wanted to go for the dragon play. This time around, they've caught Freddy just waltzing through his jungle. He gets caught out and kill credit over to Vardax. Not really the safest of plays, and with a very big minion wave, Unicorns of Love will take a second tower. The kill they'd set their sights on, and Sven, he's looking for power of evil. Sonic Wave did connect in the back line, but not on the champion he was looking for. Here comes Caitlyn from the back. Hillisang, will he get caught out by the resonating strike? No, as the zap is used just to try to slow everyone down. And Unicorns 
Two towers and a kill in exchange for a dragon. Very happy with that trade. Uh, very much worth it for them. It's all about the global goal, getting to two or three item spikes on every champion, honestly, for them, except for maybe Power Weaver on the Blanc, who already has a lot of power. Slightly delayed because of the Hourglass Rush, which you have to do often against the Zed. But the Shavana is just going to be so, so strong with Cinderhold later on in the game. Vardex obviously on the Jinx, so very good trade for them. And Freddy just walking through the jungle, not respecting the fact that Unicorns are going to do obviously the same to catch the minion wave on the top side and just kill him out. And you can argue, I mean, did SK Gaming have to trade the top tower for their dragon? Often when you have these compositions where you don't want to go too late game, you need the early dragons. But because you already lost the first one, the rush or rush the five dragons is not going to be a viable strategy for them. And we're going to get to that point where Unicorns are strong enough to contest them later on in the game. And they were missing a lot of key items, so SK could potentially have said, you know what, it's fine. We're just going to go stand back to our lanes, try and see if we can trade for tower, which is what Unicorns did. But you can obviously argue both here. Yeah. I think it's okay for SK to go for Dragon, as long as they oh. never go up two towers. There's another fight here. Hillisang is going to be in trouble. Tibbers comes down. He's going to catch him out. That's a lot of damage in reply. Hillisang actually, I think, booted over the wall. It's Vardax gets, gets the first kill of the fight. Now Fox is in full retreat, but he will get the shut down with the death mark. Here comes Vizachachi. Has Dragons descended into the team fight. Power of Evil gets burst in reply. It's a two for one. SK again punishing the Unicorns of Love. Something that is so great for SK Gaming is their farm count. If you look, big advantages for Forgiven, even on gold, despite being down two towers. SK Gaming are not out of this, but keep in mind, we keep touching on the scaling that Unicorns has in their back pocket. Even gold between the AD carries, yeah. 50 CS difference, but four kills for Vardex is keeping him relevant. This mid tower here is going to take a lot of damage. Power Weaver is here now to try and defend it, but if it doesn't go now, go down in this with this wave here. Forgiveness is going to get it on the next one. Top lane is pushing in as well for SK Gaming, so they keep looking at the towers, but with Power of Evil and Unicorns of Love being even in gold at 19 minutes, definitely a big, big win for them. They don't even have to keep looking for these fights that they take, because they can, they can honestly sit back and farm. That's another time Hillesang's caught out trying to ward. Unicorns are doing very risky warding moves, and it doesn't pay off. Power Weaver is not there, he's coming from mid lane. Visichachi is coming from the bottom lane as well. It's a good kill to get at first, but there's no control of the Zed. When your AD carry is left on his own, he's not going to survive. Definitely not. Another kill to SK. And despite the fact that, yes, Unicorns will be happy they're even, you cannot forgive the decision-making that they've had thus far. They have made positional errors, they have invaded, and they've been punished for it. So, kudos to SK for making sure they keep themselves relevant. Those four kills that Svenske accrued earlier have now resulted in three more assists. Very high kill participation for him, as well as Fox, as this game has progressed. But that 1-3-1 at 21 minutes has still not got the mid and top outer turrets. For SK, that's quite unusual, considering how much importance they usually put on those objectives. Yeah, it's also because Unicorns have forced these fights that SK hasn't been able to just sit in the lane and push in. So by them keep invading into the jungle and keep trading... Bye, uh, Hillisang. Bye, Hillisang. He's dead. That was a beautiful play from Svenskern. Just really decisive from SK. Laning phase did not go particularly well, but as they're grouping, their no hesitation engages have been great. It was uh, in Rated right in the Jungle a few times after having some very poor positional mistakes in the laning phase. And now obviously Sven Skerin hopping over that ward and booting Hillisang back. 1-5-5. Five, five. Hilly, you can land all the skill shots you want, but you can't eat them as well if you expect to help your team to win. Chachi and this Shavana with the Cinderhole has had a pretty good game for himself in terms of farming, and obviously what you do is you just keep pushing in waves and then you go into the enemy jungle and you just take their Gromp, potentially take their Wolf Camp if you have enough wards so you don't get caught out. Otherwise you go back into your own jungle. He's even looking for the Wolves here, realizing SK Gaming is around. Let's see if you can smite it, didn't have it ready. Otherwise you just keep power farming and then late game, you already have fairly high damage. You got the percent damage from your E on every auto attack after you get a lot of tanky stats from your ulti. Combine that with 
bonus HP, you become a massive tank that can even solo out AD carries. If he keeps jumping on Forgiven in fights, Forgiven won't be able to do a whole lot for the rest of the team, but that's going to be one of the problems for SK. Zed runs out of targets late game when QSS comes in, when there's two big tanks, which he can't really ult here on. There's an hourglass already for Power of Evil. Unicorn still just need to take it easy. If they can keep trading towers for dragons, that's what you want. It's exactly what you want when you have a comp that's better late game, because all you need is gold. You don't need two early dragons. That's not going to give you a whole lot. Items gives way more for you. Oh, look in at terms the pressure. Of Dragon number three is available. Unicorns have got pressure in the top lane as Chachi was pushing it out. The rest of UOL, they move towards the river, instantly peeled mid. Look at all the vision that's down in the river. You see Sven Skirin's caught out. Explosive cask was in fact used by Kickers. Did not result in a kill. That's a very big cooldown if a fight were to break out. Hillisung looking for a death sentence, unable to find a target, but we do see Forgiven gets caught by chains of his own. This power of evil. He's trying to set something up, but very big crits and lifesteal is allowing Forgiven to stay in that lane. Right, Flash Tibbers is available for Enrated. If Unicorns stick around in this river, it looks like SK want to engage. Keep in mind, Freddy's top lane, he would need to TP for a fight. There's a ward behind Unicorns here, he can TP on. He's gonna take the safe route though, because he has no outlash yet. But he steals it! Steals Spence it! Spence gets the second dragon. Death sentence onto Fox, but the Tibbers stuns up the Unicorns of Love. That super mega death rocket simply did not result in death for anyone. And SK, steal dragon, get three kills, and destroy the Unicorns. That was the Tibbers that Annie and Enrated were looking for. Visit Chachi, he should be able to solo Forgiven. There's no support yet. Chachi actually decides to back away. Didn't want to engage. He's in fact going to teleport to safety. And that was a phenomenal team fight for SK Games. It was, but I feel like we just talked about how Unicorns is going to be happy trading objectives for a Dragon. Because they're still going to wait to scale up. You have no QSS yet on your AD carry, even though that's not the important one. Let's see what happens here. Dragon, nice deal from Svenskan. Engage coming in as well. Rest of SK coming around the corner. He, Unicorns of Love staying around. Tippers on Power of Evil. He's doing nothing in this fight. Healers ain't going down as well. While Forgiven is fighting one-on-one -on -one just outside your screen here. And the Unicorns after that engage just has nothing they can do. Ends up dying for it. A dragon which they didn't get, which they didn't have to fight for either. Ends up costing them a lot more than they expected. SK Gaming again maintaining control of this game, earning themselves a 2,000 gold lead at 25 minutes. Still down in towers, they've got double the kills. And some very big items have been picked up. Need to see Large Rod for Freddy, Warmogs for Sven, Last Whisper, Brutalizer, and Blade for Fox. So damage is going up through the roof, but Visit Chachi continues to scale. 230 CS, Thornmail, Randuans, and obviously the Cinderhulk. Given his name, we're going to kill him in the fights. The question is more what's going to happen with the backline of Unicorns of Love. If and Reddy can get in flash tippers like beforehand, and there's not a QSS yet for Vardax, then there's nothing he can do in the fights himself. And that's really the big deal in, in the fights here for SK. You might just have to sacrifice your own AD carry in the start when you notice Shivana is coming in and wait for Forgiven to reach the late game before you start massively protecting him. Well, he's going to get there soon. 250 CS. He will. Yes, Vardag's had a, had a difficult laning phase, and obviously all of the rotations and aggressive plays has cost him, but that is a very substantial difference between the respective AD carries. SK even up the towers, top lane. It looks like Unicorns are going to set their sights middle, but Power of Evil does not connect with the chains. They will, however, secure the objective, and they'll be happy enough with that one. Maintaining that 2,000 gold deficit, it's not growing. And still in control of the tower game. We finally got that pink ward they've been fighting over a few times in the jungle of SK. I like that little trade from the unicorns. Again, you get a tower, it's what you need. You're fine trading them back and forth with SK at this stage of the game. They do need to have a ward on that Baron. You don't want to risk SK forcing an early one where you have zero vision. And you don't want to risk Chachi being caught out here. It's gonna be fine though. It's a lot Not of damage. Way. That's a lot of damage considering all of the armor and hit points that Chachi has. Fox was able to get a lot down. All right, Baron being started. This is a little risky, but they do have a lot of time. Baron's down to 50%. Keep in mind, Chachi, no ultimate 
Killer Sung is the one that this time around gets caught out by Freddy's Where Dark is Binding. Hey, Freddy has got two members with that Soul Shackles. Baron goes down, secured by Kickers. How many lives will it cost him? Kickers is in trouble in the pit. Dark Binding connects some Vizichachi in the background. So that's one member down. Second will fall shortly, and Kickers is going to be the next one. Sven is going to try set side some Varda. And Varnax is unable to get the lantern. That is going to be four members of the Unicorns down in reply for a Baron. SK Gaming have got all the tools they need to take control of game two. SK is really punishing Unicorns a lot here for being so aggressive despite, again, not having to. Your late game is fantastic. You don't need to force these objectives. SK Gaming are getting everything they want at the moment. You got key items completed now with the Hourglass. Last Whisper should come in very soon for Forgiven as well. And then you can start dealing with this Shyvana a little bit better. Four guys on the Baron. Shyvana is not going to help anything. Her ulti is used and she has no TP. Oh. Kegis misses the ulti completely and you're now caught in such a bad situation where the rest of SK can chase you down. Ends up getting the kills. Power of Evil not really had much of an impact on this LeBlanc. And just look at the play here. Svenska is waiting for two things. Either kick him away or wait for him to take it and then kick him while he's in the air on his way to the Thresh and then just knock him out of it. Ends up just getting the kill for his team. Seven kills on your Z. Last whisper now for Caitlyn. So Fischer, I want to quote Power of Evil from the beginning of the game. Fox either falls behind and does nothing or gets ahead and all ins and wins. Game one, it was all about Power of Evil. Went unkilled. Game two, not only Fox, but Fox's Z has been very impactful. I think Sven deserves a lot more praise for this particular victory as he yes, gets hooked he up. Does. He's even going to dash away to safety. There's no other CC was able to connect. We do see Unicorns, 30 seconds on the clock. They're trying to get control of Vision and Crab for the next Dragon Fight. Teleport's available for both. Let's see who decides to stick around. Still nothing to defend Vardax. He went for a second B of Salt. So he wants a BT before. Hell down. He's going to go down. That's Popper. There comes Enrated. He gets the tippers onto Power of Evil. This time round, Enrated is finding his targets. We do see a defensive flash from Vardax. Dragons up in five seconds. And Unicorns of Love lose two. Again, poor positioning. And this time, fantastic decisive play from Enrated. Turning around those... Poor decisions and poor positioning from the laning phase. 2-3-8. SK set their sights on inhibitor. Dragon's Descent is available for Vizichachi. Soul Shackles comes out from Freddy. That's a pretty big crit as Vizichachi is going to jump onto the backline. Tower still standing. Super Mega Death Rocket doesn't find a target. And SK, their focus was split. The laser takes down Vizichachi. The tower is still standing. Vardax gets one. All of a sudden, it's SK with the poor decisions. Stun not really going to do anything as... Rocket after rocket, the burnout is up. The zap doesn't connect, and Chachi is going to try run in rate to down. He should have burnout in a few seconds. All of a sudden, Unicorns, after losing a few, become the target of a poor decision to tower dive, and SK make the decision to dive, and that backfires. This game yeah. has all been about the mistakes in your positioning. It has, and then the other team just punish you every single time. You've got to give them that credit. There are mistakes on one side, but then the other team makes the best out of the situation here. SK Gaming is going in. Under the tower, very split up for them. Some is on kick as they do get him down. Vardax is just staying in the back line here for himself. And then we can see how Svensson gets caught by the tower. Double crit coming from Vardex on Forgiven as well. First one here, then the second one oh. ends up killing him, giving him the reset. That's a dragon as well. You got three kills, or two kills I believe it was, for Vardex. The guy who needs it the most, because he needs to get a BT and he needs to get a QSS. Otherwise, he's going to be toast in every single team fight. Once he completes it, Unicorn suddenly has something where they can bite back. After seeing how well SK have played in the spring split when they're ahead and when they have control, seeing how well Unicorns controlled their previous game, some uncharacteristic mistakes. And we'll need to see who can punish more. With 32 minutes in, that gold lead is still 3,000 gold. Warmog's now completed from Vizichachi. Just as a note, 4,600 hit points, just shy of it, with 270 armor. That is a very beefy, beefy Dragon Lady. Red buff gets secured by Sven Skjern with the Smite. I'm able to give that to Forgiven, but uh, that's not the end of the world. 
No QSS yet either, for sure. It's what he needs. I mean, you got a big, big front line, which can buy you so much time as an AD carry, as long as you don't get popped instantly in the fight. So you can have a Shivana, which has a million HP. If your damage dealer goes down when the fight starts, that million HP Shivana is not going to do anything. She's just going to keep running after people and being kited around. You're not going to win the fight from that. So with Vardax here, still being such an easy target for Zed to kill, that is a big, big problem. Get that QSS now. Don't be greedy. You don't need more damage. You need long team fights anyway because you got the big tanks. As long as you prevent the Zed from popping a target, he's not going to do anything else. Your two tanks is going to keep forgiving busy all game long as well. And then you just slowly grind them down. You look for an opening for Power of Evil. And you get that one kill for Vardax, pops his passive. And then you start cleaning up. When you play with these Cinderhulk tanks here, in order for the immolate damage to do enough, then we're not talking a quick five second team fight. We're talking long fights. You run around. I really need to see it for Vardax, because he's going to be that target for SK if there's a big team fight. Especially considering as the game has gone on, Hillisung's been the one that's been caught. I mean, let's be honest. That's one true. seven five. If your lantern bot is not protecting you, it's not working out. If if you think about Mithy playing Thresh in the quarterfinals, he played a very defensive Thresh. He was more there for Dark Passage to save Hyanin. And I think we need to see a transition to that style for Hillisung. He's been playing very pick heavy, and rates it's gone in. Flame Chompers will be enough to dissuade that righteous glory engage. I like seeing a little bit more of a defensive positioning. The barrel from Kickers connects. Freddy's in trouble. Soul Shackles does a lot of damage as the Hourglass is going to keep him alive for a little while. Vardex gets stunned up, but there's no one else from SK in place. They're not needed. Freddy and Enraged are enough. Vardex, without the QSS, gets taken out. Now, Hillisang is being dove on by Sven Skeren, and Vizichachi is trying to do the best he can from behind. But this is a difficult, difficult situation. Three versus five. It's a defensive dive away from Vizichachi. On that Shivana and Power of Evil down to 60% HP, all of a sudden, the first engage doesn't work. Try, try again, and you will find the no QSS. Jinx, he actually sold that dagger to Fisher okay, and finally goes. picked it up. It's a little late. Is it too late? Well, now it's here. That's the important thing for the Unicorns of Love. They cannot afford taking another fight like that. SK Gaming might even see if they can get a Baron for it. No ulti for some of the key members, but only three guys from Unicorns around it. Let's see what this Chachi can do. He needs to get in there, get in the mix. Chachi is annoying. trying to charge up. The Mega Death Rocket comes out. We do see the first kill goes to Power of Evil, but the Baron goes to SK and four members still alive. No fight's been able to break out. And the Death Sentence does not connect. Unicorns lose the objective, get one kill. Minions not able to take that tower on the bottom lane. Very, very smart play from SK, and they maintain control at 35 minutes. It's the late game, and it's SK that are making better decisions. That's very true. We're getting there now. Power of Evil. What is he going to build on this LeBlanc for himself? I'm not really sure what he's aiming for. You really need to get both Death Cap and Void Stuff this late in the game for himself. He cannot keep delaying both the items. I'm sure he was looking towards the likes of a Luden's Echo, which I don't agree with for him in this game at all. But he's basically been shut down from the start by going early hourglass and then getting in some of these fights where he was a lot weaker than the members of SK Gaming and not been able to get any, any picks for himself. So it's been about Vardax. He's the guy with the damage now. As you mentioned before, he can protect himself, finally. And all Unicorns of Love have to do here is not engage the fight themselves. You see SK come running at you, you position yourself with your two big tanks in the front, you move your AD carry behind, and you say, SK Gaming, okay, if you want to go in, you're going to have to flash tippers, then we have a QSS, and then the fight is on, and we can keep kiting backwards here. We, we zone out yours back line, and ours stay alive, because they now have got defensive items, and we start melting you. Well, slowly, we chip you down, and then we start melting you. Tower number six secured by SK Gaming. Their sentence goes wide. And with a Baron empowered cannon minions, they're hammering away on the next inhibitor turret. You have to think that Unicorns of Love have got their backs against the wall. And Visachachi with the smite. Shivana is not having the same impact. The 
Kickers throws out the explosive cast, but that does nothing. Dark Binding connects and Kick is the one that's in trouble. He gets booted off to the side. Power Reveal's trying to drop down Sven Skiran, but the turret is being focused by Forgiven this time round. They're not doing the same mistakes they made earlier. SK, that is. They're now onto the second inhibitor. Power Reveal looking for a flank, but he's not going to find it. SK have got supers now in two lanes. The chains, they will root Fox up. Fox is able to QSS that death sentence that connected from Hillisung, and that's a flash forward. The Lantern will keep Power of Evil alive as Kickers is now rejoining this fight at about half HP. Baron empowered super minions. SK are keeping the siege on. Deathmark is onto Vardex, but he's going to QSS that one away. Close QSSs are down from the carries. There are so many minions. The first Nexus turret will be falling to the pressure. Enraged and forgiven, playing defensively, but Kickers gets caught by a binding. He gets taken out. Nexus turret drops in the background as Enrated is in full retreat. Now Fardax is in trouble. He gets taken out by the pool. The tormented soil drops him. Hillisang is next. And SK Gaming in a messy fight will pick up a game in the series to even it at one to one. Really like their change in pick and ban phase here from SK Gaming. They went back to their 1-3-1 style. They got the Assassin in the mid lane. And most importantly, they got to take away this Morgana from the Unicorns of Love. Power of Evil on this LeBlanc did not have any impact on the game. He was so far behind. And we have to say again with the Unicorns of Love here, despite having these double Cinderhulk tanks, you have, you have a Jinx. They were playing like a team who had to win in 30 minutes. Yep. They were the ones who kept invading in on SK Gaming, getting caught out in team fights. They were the ones who even walking down for a big dragon fight, starting a Baron, everything. They played like they had to win early. And that's why they fell so far behind. And SK could close out the game despite now being very close to where we would say Unicorn should start winning the fights because now they got the QSS, they got the late game already. But they were just simply so far behind because of all the, all the plays beforehand. I feel like the Unicorns of Love made so many positional errors, the power of that split push Shivana never got enabled. As the laning phase ended, Unicorns of Love came out in a very good position. They punished some mistakes from SK Gaming, and then trying to get some deep wards, they gave up multiple kills. I don't recall Vizichachi split pushing for any extended period of time. True. And that you know, all-in investment, the Shivana was in fact the last pick. Well, the thing didn't is, work out this time. No, but the thing is, Shivana itself is never directly going to win the game on her own. Yep. You're not going to have a fetch Shivana jumping in and just getting like a pentacle because she gets kited around. The job is for her to be extremely tanky, super, super hard to take down, so your front line stays alive for much longer than the enemy team's front line, and that's how you win the team fights. But because the Unicorns simply never got to that point with yeah. late items and bad decisions, Shivana didn't get to do anything. And I have to give some praise to Sven's care on that lease. Oh, yeah. Fantastic, Fantastic engages. Uh, for a deeper look into that game to win, let's send it back over to Shocks and Friends at the analyst desk. Friends, I don't know about that. Just kidding. Very happy to have Ooh. you guys here. Um, All Square, one and one SK Gaming versus the Unicorns of Love. It came down to, well, a lot of things. Fox on an assassin, Sven's care in early, and overconfidence from Unicorns of Love and SK showing that they are confident even when uh, they are down one game. Let's maybe start with picks and bans. For you guys, what jumped out? We saw the Shivana finally it got banned out so many times yesterday and in the end didn't really do that much. Yeah, after that build-up being banned up so many times yesterday, I expected something more spectacular than that. Like, I've seen the Shivana work before in other regions, but I didn't expect too much from it when it got locked in. Um, besides that, SK just had a really smart picks and band. Like picking up the Morgana first pick was really smart, taking it away from Thresh, uh, from from Elisan, who then <laughs> has to pick the Thresh, and then you of course have the Black Shield that, un indirectly or directly counters the Thresh. Um, they played the lane as aggressive as they should have, failed in the early game, and then it was just all about mentality. Such, such a strong uh, mental performance from SK, like falling behind in the early game and then taking that lead anyway. Unicorns Evolve, on the other hand, no impact on Power of Evil, that's not what you want to have on LeBonk. She was not able to roam, she was not able to make any picks, and the item build was a bit of questionable, if you ask me. Zonia's first, and then the Morello in the mid-game, doesn't make that much of sense. Um, 
yeah, it was just they forced it. They tried to force it. Yeah, like the uh, you look at the Shivana pick, and I'm thinking, you know, I, I we haven't scrimmed the Shivana, so I don't know the exact win conditions of Shivana, but I can only imagine it's to take the eighty carry out of the fight. But I would think that if your pick is entirely based on focusing the eighty carry, I think it should kill it. No, because uh, like the, he wasn't even killing forgiven. Like uh, it, it seemed really weird. And uh, one of the other things is like when you look at top laners, you generally look okay. Well, they pick this top laner. We need to pick something that's more impactful more useful a lot of the things is how useful is this top laner and I didn't really see the Shivana doing anything that was spectacular like I'm sure there was a lot more picks uh, and I can't name any off the top of my head but I can I can only imagine that, like there's more champions that are more useful than that another thing I wanted to touch on was just like Sven Skarin's Lee Sin you don't see a lot of Lee Sin uh, at least he's not that high on the priority list right now and uh, he really uh, imposed his will on the early game like uh, you saw the dual lane of Unicorns of Love beating the SK dual lane. The Unicorns of Love dual lane has been beating, uh, winning their lanes a lot. Like hats off to them. I don't think we've been commenting on them a lot, but mm -hmm. they've been doing a really good job as a dual lane. And then Sven Skarin just makes sure his team gets out of the early game. He says, okay, dual lane, uh, you guys give up a kill. That's okay. I'm going to make sure we stick in this. And then he really enabled his team to take over in the mid and late. Yeah, exactly. Uh, four and zero, I think, in a matter of yep. a couple of minutes. And then, of course, it also freed up Fox, who is doing good in his lane. Even if he doesn't get any kills roaming, he puts on so much pressure on the lanes that he's roaming to, and the difference was so clear. He should keep going for something like that, even though Zed might not be an option in the next game. Yeah, it, it definitely should have been banned. Like Zed is the strongest champion for Fox by far. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, I was gonna let it go, but you laugh at it yourself. <laughs> yeah, I, I, w I didn't want to say it. It was just because it's a nice phrase. So um, you have to take the Z away from the from Fox because if Fox gets rolling with that, there's just no coming back for him. He was having an incredible, uh, like perfect show off on the champion. And as I said earlier in the beginning, he's underrated. He can put his team on his back. And with the help of Sven Skarin in the early game, he just put it up through the late game and then won the game. And I'm kind of frustrated because you saw the first item Hourglass out of Power of Evil. Okay, sure, you can justify it. But where is the QSS? You go. You should go one item, two item, QSS. There's Vardex, no way. Yeah. yeah, Vardex. There's no reason you should go three items into QSS. And then they, they don't even have the the PD finish. So I'm thinking a dragon. Uh, are we gonna go to the dragon replay? We can if you want to. We can pull it up right now. Uh, indeed. Okay. Uh, yeah. So I don't even think you should be taking this fight in the first place because if you don't have the QSS finish, uh, you can't you can't take this fight because Zed is just gonna destroy your team. Uh, Dentist, you want to take over? Yeah, like, <laughs> this is just one of the two situations uh, where Unicorns of Love had a questionable decision making. In, in that moment, every one of his carries is alive. So they, it is sure that they tried to contest it. And with Sven Skarin on Lee Sin, there's a high chance that they're going to get the Drake. And afterwards, Unicorns of Love are behind. SK can format themselves how they want to and then just take kill after kill. The second question, the second scene that was questionable, the Baron. They started it themselves. They don't need to. They scale into late game. They have two super tanks with the jungle in the top lane and they have an AD carry who goes three damage items into QSS. You don't want to fight them up until that point where your AD carry has the QSS. And they started to force fights way earlier. Can't, can't yeah. work. It comes can't back work. to the criticism we had of the Unicorns of Love about halfway through the split. We said they don't have a pause button. They showed it here. If they're not miles and miles ahead, they'll try and force the issue. And you can't do that versus a team like SK Gaming. Um, as you said on Aurel Fox, huge game on him. And I hope this doesn't dissuade Power of Evil from playing those all-in hard assassin champions. But if he is going to, he has to go a different item path. And he has to just try and put the same amount of pressure on the map by roaming. Because I think we just, I was surprised that we didn't see that. Yeah, absolutely. But as a matter of fact, he knows when Zed is open, he can't pick the Kog'Maw into mm -hmm. it because that just doesn't make sense. But Zindra and Cassiopeia, two other champions of his, are just taken away. So LeBlanc is a good pickup, but he has to go for a winning lane. If you rush the Zonyas, you don't go for a winning lane. It's a skill matchup in slight favor of Zed, but a player like Power of Evil can take the W in the lane. So rush the Morelicons, try to win the lane, and then make plays by roaming. That's the Power of Evil I want to see. Yeah, and maybe just a bit more patience uh, in their in their fights. Um, they're they're taking. I think unicorns like to take all the fights, but I don't think that's generally correct, as you saw in this game. But one of the actual things I wanted to touch on is maybe yeah, we should they should ban away. Okay, so I almost said we should. They should ban <laughs> away the Zed uh, because, like you said, it's going to open up a lot more picks and then uh, allow them to you know diversify their strategies out of the mid lane. Yeah, we will see. But fantastic showing here by SK Gaming, as you say, that mental fortitude and just going on that confidence, picking those fights and closing it out. For now, though, we need to take a break as we set up for game three between the Unicorns of Love and SK. It's all tied up and one win apiece. And the 
next Dead Nexus will take it to match points, so stay with us. If this game goes to can five you? games, can we order so? huh? cheeseburgers? <laughs> okay, thank you for dinner. I'm not even joking. Uh, what taco? Yeah. Like, he, can we get taco here? Taco? Uh, good, uh, Mickey D? And also he has the kill pressure. Oh, the Descendants connect! It's gonna land on a Flame Chompers! Hillisung has done it again! They're coming from the river. That's a Dragon's Rage to boot them back. The fat man comes in and throws the barrel down. All of a sudden, Fox is popped. The roam grabbed themselves. Oh, the no, Descendants! Wow. Really? It connected! The Super Mega Death Rocket's available with a BF Sword and a Pickaxe. Nice that is block. body blocked! Sven Skeren saves for Given's life! Gonna take the safe route though, because he has no outlash yet. But he steals it! Steals Sven Skeren gets the second dragon! Death Sentence onto Fox, but the Tibbers stands up the Unicorns of Love! I go over, I go over. Let's go, get it, get it. Go to Jinx. Push mid, push mid. Jinx, 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 Jinx. Kill her, kill her. Nice. Push? And SK Gaming will pick up a game in the series to even it at one to one.